Rolling. All right, before we pull the engine cover and we pull injectors out, you're going to be pulling the rocker levers, the rocker shafts, you know, and a lot of the parts up there on the head. Uh, you need a clean work area. Well, we're outside. We're under my shade tree. We're, you know, we're not inside a shop anywhere. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a barrel and some, you know, maybe some plywood or something underneath this little awning here and get us a place where we can set parts and they don't get dirty and dusty, you know, just, you know, where leaves don't fall on them because it's that time of year. And uh, get us a clean little clean work area, something to put our parts on. And uh, also, you know, we're going to be working around all these wiring harnesses and the top of the motor and all this stuff. So, you know, it's a good idea to knock all the dirt and dust off all this because you're going to be up there with your arms and banging this stuff. You don't want dirt and dust to get down in your motor. So we're going to clean up a little bit and uh, prep an area to take this thing apart. Uh, you need to be concerned about the amount of fuel that's left in the injector, you know, whether any fluids get down on top of the cylinder. We want to avoid getting any fluids down in the top of the cylinder because if you get fluids down on top of the cylinder, uh, when you go to put it all back together, if there's any fluid in there, you can actually, the cylinder won't have any space. The liquid will take up all the space and it can uh, cause a condition known as hydrolocking. It'll hydrolock the engine. So what I do, I mean, you don't have, absolutely have to do this, uh, but what I do is a protection so that I know I don't have to worry about the fuel, all the fuel inside the injector. The injector holds a lot of fuel. Uh, instead of it pouring down into the cylinder and causing a hydrolock issue or any other problem, I like to burn off all the fuel inside the injector. Uh, injector set I'm going to take apart. So how I do that, I have a little trick that I do. I use the leak down test kit and the end of the hose and I get my air line. And I just use my air gun and I put some pressure on it uh, like this with my hand. I don't put a lot of pressure. I, you know, I just give it you know, a little bit of pressure with the hand like this. And I do that to give it some air. At the same time, somebody's cranking the engine, and what that'll do is that'll push all the fuel down into the cylinder as they're cranking it, and it'll burn off all the fuel. It'll actually run the engine will actually run on the excess fuel in the injector until it's you know pretty much dry. Hmm. So we'll do that. We'll crank the engine, and I'll put some air on this at the same time, and we'll let it burn off the fuel out of the injectors, so that we they don't end up in in the top of the cylinder when we go to take them apart. Yeah. Let's do that. Start cranking. See how it burned it off? Yep. Let's do it one more time. Okay. All right, that's good. So now we've burned off all the fuel out of the injectors, uh, out of the back three, anyways. You know, because we're hooked to the back three. If you had to do, if you had to pull uh, injectors from the front and the back half of the engine, you know, one, two, or three, and four, five, or six, or one, you know, uh, it, it's in sets of three. You would have to. Then I would move this to the front side, you know, the front metering actuator. Yeah. I'd do the same thing to yeah. clear out the fuel out of the front three injectors. But on your truck, we don't have to pull the front three. Yes. We're just going to do the one injector. So we should be good to go. Uh, the fuel's out of the injector now. We can pull it and not have to worry about the fuel pouring down into the cylinder, things like that. And we can keep that thing nice and dry. So the next thing is uh, pull the engine cover and start taking things apart. Yep. Cut. Uh-huh. Okay. Taking cover off. Yeah. Here, let me. Look inside, make sure there's no water intrusion, cool intrusion. Oh, his oil looks beautiful. Look at that. He's got that MM2 tune. Eh, looks like he... Yeah. Oil change after a little that's, while. That's it's not it's perfectly jealous. clean, but it looks good. That's a mile it. Yeah. Uh, Rolling. Here I got uh, the cover off my engine, my head. And uh, I'll just make want to make a quick look at the, at the lobes and the camshafts and all that stuff. And I see the... They're really, really, really good at the 635,000 miles I have on my engine. Uh, I had it since uh, it has 450,000 miles. And uh, I kind of baby the engine. I run it 60 all the time, doing oil change every 14,000 miles. I got MM2 Ross's tune in it. It's run perfectly. I love it. It's just, uh, I guess this engine will, will last with this camshafts and with these slopes. With rockers will last a lot of time if I'll still uh, drive the way I drive the, drive the way Ross has thought about uh, say about to drive with the boost uh, to 20 pounds drive on foot try to use less cruise control especially on hills yeah 
and yeah, do the oil change regularly, do it more often, do it at 14,000. Most of uh, guys like to do it at 20,000, 25, 30,000, that's way too much, I believe. You just want to keep your engine, uh, keep your engine as long as possible to make money for it. With it. Rolling. All right. Cummins says there's two different methods for replacing one injector. We're going to replace one injector on this thing. Um, the way you do it, the, the, the first way they say you can do it is to work around all the rocker arms for the valves, for the valve train. You know, you can pull the, uh, the injector uh, arms off and the injector shaft off and then, you know, where you can get to the injector and then you can work around these other valves uh, and these arms and rockers. I, I don't like doing that because even if you do it Cummins' way or that, you know, that way, you still have to set, uh, you know, you have, to, you have to back this one off and you end up having to adjust the overhead on this, you know, let's say we're going to do number one, actually we're going to do four, but uh, you'd have to adjust everything here and then you'd also have to adjust the injectors for these two uh, because you'd have to take this entire set off, which is, you know, the, it comes in two sets. There's one set that does the first three, there's one set that does the back three. Well, you have to adjust all this anyway. I really don't believe in that. I don't like it that, you know, it's my personal opinion. You don't do half an overhead adjustment. Uh, I don't care, you know, if you did it last week. You just don't do that. If you're going to do the overhead adjustment on one valve, do the whole engine, do it all, set it all properly, set it consistently and evenly so you don't have half of them in one adjustment and half of them with another adjustment. Just do it right. And since that's the case, I use method number two, which is take the, uh, the valve rockers off and the valve shaft off, uh, rocker shaft off, and the injector uh, rockers off and the injector shaft off and just get it out of your way. Because you're going to have to reset, readjust the overhead anyways. There's no reason to just leave it on there and leave it in your way and fight it around it. So yeah. that's just the way I do it. That's the way I like to do it. Uh, since we're going to do the, the uh, uh, rear injector, it's number four. We're going to have to take the back half uh, loose. And not, we'll leave the front half on here. We won't take it apart. But we're going to run the overhead on the whole thing. So let's just go ahead and, and pull the, the injector shaft off and the injector arms and the rocker shaft off uh, for the uh, valves. Uh, and the rocker shaft and the uh, rocker arms, and we'll just take them off uh, as assemblies, get them out of our way, remove all the cross heads, and just get all that stuff out of our way where we can work easily and, uh, you know, get around this stuff so it's not a big pain. So um, that's the next step. We just start taking things apart. Cut. Recording. All right, first thing you want to do is get the engine brake harness out of your way. That's the engine brake harness. Let's get it up out of our way. We'll unplug it right here. Two solenoids. Two solenoids, yep, right here. And there's like little pins. Where they're sticking inside the uh, inside the, uh, there you the block go. here. Yeah, we'll just sort of work this up and get it up out of the way. So we're gonna have to do that. And uh, see if we can. not Yeah, they actually stick the uh, the engine harness, the engine brake harness. They stick it to the very thick steel wire. Yeah, because uh, they wanted, to, I guess the comments wanted to make it steady in that place, yep. not to wiggle around when the engine is working or something like that. Yeah. So I think it's a very, There's one. very clever idea. There's the other, and we just sort of lay that over and out of our way, down on our little towel there, to get it out of our way really good. Okay. And next, we're gonna start taking off the uh, the rocker shafts. I think that's a 15. Let's go grab a 15. Cut.